Chilled, wasn't oh, it? Yes. Uh, hello and welcome to All About the Bass. I'm Nathan. And I'm Lee. And today uh, we are in what for me is completely alien territory because this thing ain't got no frets on it. It ain't got no frets. It might look like it has, but it really hasn't. Yeah. So and what's the concept today? So Lee? yeah, I thought we 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 haven't touched much on fretless. We did a video. Of, oh, no, it's a brief. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> ages ago. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, we we kind of we picked a few bases around that sort of six hundred quid mark. There was like a, a Warwick and a, an Ibanez at the time that right. we had to look at. So, completely opposite ends. I thought we'd just look at the cheapest bases, fretless bases we've got in stock. Okay. Compared to the most expensive. Okay. And see, so, if, you know, if, if it's worth paying the difference. Yeah. Or see what the difference is. Yeah? See what. The, yeah. Obviously, there's got to be a difference, right? Surely. There's got to be. There's got to be. Hasn't there? From our cheapest at one hundred and forty quid to the most expensive being two grand between Ooh. the four of the ones that we've got here. Um, You'd, you'd hope so. So yeah, that's what we're here to test. All right, so, so uh, um, what we were playing then... Yes. Um, this isn't the bottom of the pile, is it? It's not, no. That is the Squire Vintage Modified um, Fretless Jazz Bass, uh, which is just under 300 quid, 297. That, well, I'll tell you what, that's, that's a, a bargain. It's, it's all right. It's really, that plays real nice. Yeah. I like that, and I think it looks really, uh, really pretty too, actually. It looks good. Uh, initially, you know, because I'm so old-fashioned. I thought, oh, no, it's got no scratch plate. I don't like it. But you know what? I think it's grown on me already. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah. And, and that I... does not play like a sub-300-pound bass either. That's no. really, really nice slim neck on Really it. comfy. These are, um, now, I don't know what, too much about this, but Ebonol is the material that he uses in the fretboard on this. Ebonol? Ebonol. Oh, yeah? So, um... So, I, what is that? Is that like a... What's I that? guess is it's... Is that wood or... Yeah, I'm so sorry. I do figure if anyone knows, let us know. But I, I, even, I, I think it's just a composite, like a rich light kind of thing, but meant to be... Somebody find sort of out. Urban, we get some... Like, like... Come on, it's not like ebony, but it's, no, it's ebony. Well, there was somebody here that could work this in. We'll get back to you on that. Um, yeah, so that's really nice. Uh, and then the I... Only, the only thing I would say about this... Yeah. It's got round, round strings on it. Right, so... Uh, yeah, there's probably worth explaining. So um, you can get the most common type of, of string is normally round wound that you find on a normal fretted bass, yeah. which means the winds are going that way. And electric guitars and acoustic guitars, actually. They're all, they're all yep. kind of round wound. On anything. Yeah. Um, but generally on fretless, depending on the company, it's quite interesting to see who actually straight out of the box loads them up with, with flat wound strings instead of round wound. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this one's got round wounds which will always make the sound a little bit brighter anyway. Um, compared to flat wounds, which are, say, wound completely flat, so it's very, very, very smooth, it's completely smooth, but gives you more of that double bass uh, swell to the sound that sure. I find normally um, that you wouldn't get out of round wounds. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a more mellow sound, which is kind of what you're going to be after you for a fretless bass, I would have thought. Generally, yeah. I, I know I've spoken to a lot of people before. Sometimes it's, it's sort of mixed. It's, um, it, sometimes it's a bit of a jump going from your fretted four string when you're playing a gig and then, oh, okay, I've got to do one song or two songs on a fretless. And it, heaven forbid. Heaven forbid, yeah. But, but if it is with round wounds, some people find it's just too weird a jump between the two types of string. Yeah. So they'll put round wounds on it. But 
it can chew up your fretboard. Well, well, I, in my own experience. Can it? Yes. Well, it really does happen. I've got a rosewood board, 80s jazz bass. That it, it, I bought it second hand, but it was already, you tell someone was played on, with round rounds for years on it. It's right. just a f- a lines all the way down the fretboard where the, everything's been scuffed out. Oh, okay. So, so f- now you're, you've got the, uh, the sort of yeah, the top Im- of the range yes. fender there. So this is the American professional fretless jazz bass. Um, that looks gorgeous too. It's, yeah, it's a lovely one. So obviously the American Pro range was updated in part last year um, with slightly different voices of pickups and uh, slightly different neck shape on the jazz bass. It was even thinner, actually. They went even thinner down the, down the end. Right. So, um, so yeah, it feels comfy to me straight away. Flat wounds on this as well. Okay, so that's So okay. it's more to what I'm used to when you're picking up a jazz bass. Are flat wounds more like expensive? Are they, are flat wounds really expensive? I, I'm just wondering if it's a price be. thing with this. Obviously, they're trying to get in a certain price, aren't they? Maybe <laughs> flat wounds are more expensive. Maybe. I mean, um, they used to be. Well, in shops that I worked before, you know, they used to always be like the fretless set was like an, another five or another tenner. Oh, right. But actually, not, not masses more. Yeah. Not too much more. I think it's generally very similar, but we keep quite a few different options in stock for us so there are some more affordable options right but saying that the fretless we got here the stag which is our cheapest one which is uh 140 pounds um this has flat wa- does that have flat ones yes, it does. It yeah. yeah yeah it's flat ones really, it is it? yeah it's yeah. flat ones yeah. so if it's not it can't it can't be a price thing maybe you know you think this is 140 pound 300 quid no you're right okay. so it's not a price thing they've just chosen to put round ones on this that's okay. it would you like to know what happened Yes, oh, please. Oh, now, oh, this, update. This, 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 um, hang on, breaking news. Uh. Ebonol is a synthetic material that is built to look and sound and feel like ebony. So there you Thanks, have it. Thanks, mate. Look at that. So, there we are. Did you all hear that? Ebonol, for those who didn't, Ebonol yeah. is a synthetic synthetic a material, material designed to, to be feel mm, and sound mm, like, like ebony. ebony. But it's not Emily. Not Emily. <laughs> good. Well, that's good then. Let's, uh, let's clear that up. So now we know. Ebonol. Ebonol. Give me some Ebonol. I have a large Ebonol. <laughs> and Coke. <laughs> cool. All right, good. Uh, so, well, we've got to have a look at these other ones then. A. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, to, between these two here, so this is, say, 300 quid. This is around 1,600. Right. Um, so, American made for, yeah, so for, for the, the, the Corona factory. Um, obviously, this, something like this will be upgraded raw materials so better quality maple alder pickup slightly better quality um all the usual stuff you'd normally find so what, how much was that one 1600 pounds just under 1600 300 pounds okay so 1200 yeah. quid 1400 yeah let's yeah, just well. swap very quickly i want yeah. to see how that feels let's so straight people, away let's give I can people see. some real life uh oh okay yeah so different. Now, actually, this feels a little smoother on the back. So that's of the neck. got that's like a gloss, gloss finish. Neck. Ooh. on the neck. Ooh. This is like a satin finish. Oh man! I have to say, I prefer the satin finish, but I yeah. don't hate. I don't hate the gloss on that. I, uh, I love the satin finish on that. But this, it, it sl- you can move a bit easier. I find that right. that's a, there's a bit more resistance. Mm. But resistance is useless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so actually, this feels really, really comfy. Yeah. Um, what are you thinking? This is not. This is not unpleasant though. This is not an unpleasant yeah. bass. Yeah. And it has special condoms on the machine, so it doesn't, <laughs> so it doesn't accidentally you see reproduce it's itself. Fresh out of the box, this one. Yeah. So, so yeah, we can include the uh, special tuning peg condoms if you wish. Yeah. But we might take those off in a minute. But but yeah. So. Uh, but th- this this seems very nice. But then I don't know if it's twelve hundred pound nice. Yeah. This is, the, this is the thing. So obviously, I... these are all in stock, ready for you guys to come in and try properly, to so make up your own minds. But obviously, this is us making a uh, um, a quick comparison for you, if it's if yes. it's helpful. Us experienced fretless bass players. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Well, let's have, let's check these other dudes out then quickly and see what uh, see yeah. what's in store. Okie dokie. I think you can. Uh... I'll grab the stag if you want, mate. Yes. Yes, you do that. Grab the stag. You have that. Gotcha, mate. Give me that. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Watch. Nice. I'll put that there. You take that. that. I'll you put, put that, that there. there. It's cooperation. Look at that. That's Sesame Street. Cool, cool, cool. Oh blimey! That goes in there. Okay. Okay. Come and you're back in the room. So, obviously, we've got some radically different things here. Those two are essentially the same thing. A yes. jazz bass. Uh, yeah, a jazz bass. And just to point out, just because I'm fiddling around here, um, th- these are the controls are exactly the same. You've got a volume for each pickup and one tone. 
Yeah, which is um, standard, sort of jazz setup. Standard for jazz. Um, this is actually has exactly the same. So just two two pickup volumes and uh, an overall tone as well. More like a sort of pre-J setup. So you've got the precision pick, yeah. split single there. Split jazz pickup. pickup at the back. That's it. Okay. And Bob's your monkey. And over um, here, this is obviously a classic uh, music man. Yes. Stingray. So, but with no frets on it. But with no frets. Uh, and it's got round wound strings again. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you kind of think, all right, how's this going to pan well, this, out? Well, this is actually the cheapest versus the most expensive is fretless it? that we have in stock at the moment. Okay. Um, obviously, we're, we are expanding as we ever are with our base base uh, I know, department. but I've, I've been trying to lose weight. I'm sorry about that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> but there's, um, this is just a couple we've got in stock at the moment. So this, not saying that we're <coughs> having a massive, massive range of fretlesses, but this is just a bit of a selection. But 140 quid versus 2,000 pounds. Okay, mm. that's a big difference. Yes. All right, so what is the difference? Should 18, we see, uh, yeah, go on, give me a cheap 16. one. Let's see what, okay, see cool. what it sounds. Right. You play it, right, and I'll have a whittle about. Okay. We'll see what tones we can get out of it. So this is both pickups on and full and, and full tone on. So we've No, got... it isn't. I'm not going to do that. You're I'm not going to do that. I hate that. <laughs> Let's turn it all off. Off. And we'll start with the back pickup. All right. And go on. I have to say that that ain't bad, is it? It's not at all. 140 pounds. 140 pounds. Well, uh, that's a great option. I say just to think of you know even just, just thinking about toying with the idea of giving it a go. Like. What is it? What I was exactly what I was going to say because obviously you know most bass players I guess play fretted bass and they might just think oh wouldn't it be nice just to have that in my armory yeah. fretless bass. 140 quid. Look, price of uh, probably of uh, two coffees at Starbucks or something. Yeah, or one pedal. <laughs> Some, you think some of the pedals that we yeah we, we looked at yeah you know. that's true yeah that's very true um, that's that's no money really mm. um, so and you could suddenly be in the world of fretless bass yeah buy that and a chorus pedal and uh, Bob's your uncle yeah off you go listen to Paul Simon yeah and then does he play oh. bass I don't know he had some great fretless players though didn't he oh, he was a goalkeeper. <laughs> anyway, so that's pretty cool. Well, right. yeah, right. So we'll see what yours can do. So, all right, yeah. Well, I'm gonna. I apologise in advance for this, but I'll sort of bluff my way through. No, it. Mate, no. So put that. Uh, we can't put it there, can you? You're just gonna have to. Move I'll tell you it. what. No, if I move, if I do that. Look at that. Good lad. There we go. Right, go on then. Right, controls wise here. Yes. Uh, so. Volume, and then we've got three band EQ, uh, which which is cut and boost on this. And that's bass from that end, isn't it, mate? Bass, bass middle, treble. Wow. Probably. Yeah. We'll find out in a minute, won't we? Nice. Right, wish me luck. Okay, no, good luck. I'm going to turn it all off, actually, all the EQ off. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Is that it? Have you finished? Have That's you been it. through the gamut yeah. yes. of EQs? Been through it all. So, um, well, it's curious, right? Because what strikes me about this is it sounds very much, it can sound very much like a Stingray. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily what you want in a fretless bass. But I guess, you know, with the right settings, i.e. That's treble what I off. Yeah, take treble off. Middle up. Yeah. Bit of bottom. Bit in. of bass, but not too much on that. That was really, no, was really it a bit booming lively. through. Middle up, bass up, treble off. Yeah. Yeah, you got the you got the punch coming through. Mm. Yeah, you got the punch there, but say maybe say to get that smoothness to the sound, you want to maybe roll the, roll the treble off on that. But again, how does it feel? I think the first thing you do if you bought this uh, is get a set of flat wounds on it. Yeah, yeah see, it does make a difference, doesn't it? It does you make know. you know, especially coming from others that think, okay, I'm there with that now, and then. Oh, maybe I'm wrong, that. right? Maybe somebody sat at home going, "No, I want it to sound like a stem with no frets on it." So, uh, you yeah, know, if that's the case, well, you know, write in and, and let us know. I say write in, don't write in literally with a pen and paper. <laughs> Go, I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> yeah. Do that. Return. Plenty more of that. Come on, we love it. Because <laughs> we'd love to know. We really would. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so all right. So cheapest, most expensive. Yeah. Ah, oh, what what do you what do you think? What do you think? I come you, on. Right, so um, I, I I told you a quick story just before we started this, and my experience with these. Yeah, and it's these, disgusting. And it's quite frankly, I'm, I'm not surprised yeah. you went to prison for it. <laughs> so that one, not that one. Oh. But, but then the other one before that. Yeah. Um, was the, my experience with these bases about 15 years ago? My first music shop I worked in. Yes. Um, they had a little bit of a thing where the fretboard. I don't know if this was just me. Every base that came out was was having this like black. Like, the, like it had been finished properly, so, oh, that, right. so there was yeah, like yeah, a stain yeah, yeah, on the yeah, fretboard yeah, yeah. that was coming off. So obviously back then, probably about the same sort of money, I, I didn't really go, go, Did you go not near like it. my alternative theory? It's... But you said it might be the strings, yeah. Well, yeah, because I notice very often with new strings on an instrument that, that if I've been playing it for, for 10 minutes, that I get black come off on my fingers. Do you never get that with strings? Not really, strings? not really, no. But, but, but then again, say, it, it may be, I just remember the, going back to the time of being like... Yeah, you could actually, so you, you literally could actually rub it. Could, yeah, I mean, okay. sort of fall off. But, but that's old stag. Old stag, that's it. This is it. new stag. New stag. He's, and, he's licked this, he's rubbed it, he's done everything <laughs> he possibly could. <laughs> and it won't come off. It won't. So, th this is amazing. For 140 quid, I thought the sound was brilliant. Tone off, it's just a big, big fat sound. And I totally agree. You know, I think anybody that just wants to have a little dip their toe in the water of fretlessness, yeah, it's a no brainer. 140 quid, good lord, why yeah. not? Why would you not do that? Definitely. Um, if you wanted something a, a bit more authentic, traditional, mm -hmm. and nice quality, quite frankly, yeah, that's lovely too. That's it a really is. lovely thing. Get those strings off, get some flat land strings on there. It's in the style of a uh, very, very famous bass player as well, you may recognize. Paul McCartney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Yeah. His scratch, scratch plateless bass. Did, um, Yeah, old Jacko. Jacko. Yeah. Jacko Pastorius, obviously. If um, you don't know that dude, you need to check him out seriously. You need to stop watching this. Yes. Come back to it, obviously, but you need to stop watching this and uh, type in Jacko Pastorius live into YouTube and But I'll never just... come back to this after yeah. I start watching Jacko <laughs> yeah. Pastorius. No, he was the dude, right? He was the, gov the governor that really Made the fretless bass what it is, and By we actually all just pulling, pulling his frets out of a fretted jazz bass. He, he literally did, yeah. One night, <laughs> just, what the day he, he had a gig that night, and uh, he, he went down to the hardware store apparently, and got some pliers that and some filler. That epoxy yeah, resin, yeah, wasn't just it? some just... filler, and he, and he said, he told his mate he was going to do this. He said, you've got to be kidding, we've got a gig tonight. Are you, are you nuts? And he went, ah, be fine, mate, you'll be fine. And that's what he did. He pulled all the frets out, filled it up, dried off a bit, sanded it off. That was it, carried on, and, and the, the rest, rest is, rest is history. Like, say, his history. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, obviously he was the dude. Did he use flat wound strings? Oh, uh, that I do not know. I'm pretty, I'm quite ashamed that I don't, actually. Uh, a bit, a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll come back to you. Oh, yeah, so I'm not too sure if he did. I do, I'm a massive Jack of the Story fan. Um, he, for me, like, oh God, we won't talk so much about him, but that, that was a turning you can't, point. You can't not, do something on fretless jazz bass and uh, not talk about Jacob Pastorius. Because yeah. he was, 
you know, just he was the dude. Right? Absolutely, he's the, the godfather. Yeah. Well, of the bass. Yeah. Uh, you know, of modern electric bass, he's one of the greatest players ever. But obviously, of fretless bass. Nice. Huh. We've got a news update. Uh, Jack of Astoria studios round round strings. Did he really? Round round strings. Jack of Astoria is round round strings. There you go. There we go. So uh, there's uh, this. That there's something on that in there. On that, yeah. If if the god that Jacko is was using it, then. So uh, forget everything I said about round round strings. <laughs> <laughs> no, if, they, they feel nice. I think. I, they I, I do. Personally, I, I prefer the flat round. And it gives a more mellow, sort of chilled out sound. Yeah, and we're not all all a demon like Jacko. No. But. And maybe he was lying. Maybe he did use flat string. Maybe. Maybe he's showing off. <laughs> it was a bit of a show off, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, and so on that, you know, I mean, it's, obviously, this is a, in his style where he took the scratch plate off his jazz bass, obviously, what we said about frets all out, filled it all in. It looked very similar to this, but battered. Oh, that was his thing, was it? He took that off. He took oh, the scratch I plate see. off. Yeah, and it was just wrecked, like the, the little chip to, to yeah. Um, this is an American uh, Fender Jazz bass, which is probably more along the lines of what he actually used. He, he had an early 60s, loads of early 60s proper Fender American Jazz basses. So, right. um, not that this may sound, you know, 1,200 pounds better than this. Maybe it, maybe it doesn't, if you, you know. Well, I think but, going back to our, our summary, <laughs> which obviously yeah, sorry, we digressed we digress. from quite a, some time ago, <laughs> uh, you know, cheap, brilliant. Yeah. Bit more money, lovely, looks great, sounds yeah. great, very authentic. Um, and then, you know, if you got the money, well, invest in an American Fender, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if you want the music man with no frets in it, buy this. Yeah, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is our <laughs> extensive sorry. <laughs> sorry if we haven't really got very far, but that is literally, you know. It, well, that's that, what I think. That is it. No, that is, is exactly it? that. You know, I think this is a perfect base. Just want to give it a go. 140 quid, just get yourself started on fretless. Christmas is coming, unless it's just been. But yeah, maybe it's your birthday. Yeah. Christmas, any of the, you know, any of the above. Fretless bass isn't just for Christmas, it's for life. Too right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yes. So, uh, there you go. Well, so that just it. about wraps it up, I think, in a very right. vague, roundabout way. Yeah. So, I'll make of that what you will. I think, yeah, but we like all of them, don't we? Uh, man, I do. To varying degrees. Varying degrees. Tone on this is wicked for the money. That, the feel of it straight away was just easier for me to, compared to that. Like actually, honestly, but oh, yeah. um, um, you just you you're you're cheap, aren't you? You're a, oh, a yeah. cheap tart, yeah, quite man. frankly. Cheap tart. <laughs> <laughs> so I love the luxuriousness of the expensive bass. Yeah, no, can't play. no, it's it. And this one, I just oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Very yeah. nice, very very nice. But lovely. But say, if you enjoyed what you've seen, um, hopefully you have. Um, you must be mad. Let us know. <laughs> and anything we haven't covered, or say anything in the comments below, we really you know, appreciate hearing from you guys. So, uh, yeah, as long as um, it's nice. As long as it's nice. We'll tell you if it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. It's nice. been all about the bass. Oh, I've been Nathan, and the fretless been... king. Ah, oh, yes. Yes. And I've been Lee, the fretless queen. <laughs> hey! <laughs> bye bye! See ya!
Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.